Hello, I'm George from Ireland. Here I am in London um, at Paddington Canal Basin. Um, and as you can see, it's a place for fun. They're on a little pleasure cruise there. Um, so this, we're, we're quite close to Paddington Station. Paddington was a village in the county, county of Middlesex for centuries. You may know that song about whoever of Paddington Green. Watch a voyage around, by my, by, around my father by John Mortimer. And it's his blind barrister father singing it. But anyway, it became industrial from the 1840s when the, when the um, uh, railway station was built here and the canals have been here for almost a century prior to that. Look at these little things to have fun in. Um, anyway, uh, because um, goods, particularly from the English Midlands, were coming here by canal. There's the Regent's Canal, um, uh, which was obviously completed in the early um, 19th century when the Prince Regent was ruling um, in behalf of his deranged father, George III. Prince Regent later became um, George IV. Uh, and so it was a way to transport heavy goods. Um, you just had them on your little canal boat and they have to be a specified length and width because the canal sometimes is very narrow and so they can turn when they need to, which are not often, go through the locks. Um, so it's quite slow going through the locks, but very sure it's great for fragile and heavy things. Because obviously the waters take most of the weight. Um, have your have your um, uh, horse on the towpath pulling it along. In some places they can even wade in the canal itself. Uh, so what else about that? Anyway, then railways took over. 1825, George Stevenson invented the, the train. That was the rocket. Um, the first of all, that they'd had a horse-drawn. Um, uh, carriages on, on rails and they also had um, steam engines on the road and he said well let's put the two together and there was the first railway in the world stopped Darlington Railway in 1825 you might think it was around London but it wasn't it was North East England they've been using them in um, coal mines for a long time and of course there's a lot of coal in the Newcastle region um, and then uh, unfortunately um, William Huskisson the president of the Board of Trade became the first railway fatality in the world slightly afterwards when there was a when there was a, a line open near, near Liverpool people didn't understand how fast these things how things are how dangerous they are but um, anyway so the canals went into, into decline as railways took over and the country was girded in iron as they said it was railway mania and by the early 20th century these canals were um, largely in disuse they were quite decrepit because they take a lot of maintenance and then after the second world war anywhere around a canal was really run down sometimes bombed out just abandoned many dilapidated buildings and such people who lived there were often the very poorest of the poor people who were socially marginal and that was that and there are many dead rivers in this country because they've been poisoned with all sorts of industrial chemicals and the, the Thames was a dead river in the 1950s as in no fish living in most of it but then um, things on the site such as um, offices or um, uh, yuppie flats, um, uber cool bars and then there's this minimalist trend let's let's not have plaster on the wall let's just have a bare brick wall in the restaurant the bar and things like that. So here are some canal boats I knew of an old man from Warwickshire who used to live on one of these things it was tied up at the bottom of a farmer's field in the canal in the winter and he'd ply the waterways of um, England and Wales in the in the um, in the summer so these are canal boats and someone my height could not properly stand up on it, even in the middle. You get an idea. So you can buy these things quite cheaply. Apparently there's a little as 50,000 pounds, but then you have to pay for mooring, there's some maintenance. <laughs> you don't want it to sink and things like that. So it's not as simple as you might think. Uh, you know, you've got to pay for electricity hookup, which is apparently more than for ordinary electricity, not hook up in that kind of a way. So um, by the 1980s, this was prime property. This started being rebuilt. It's only in the late 90s that it reached this sort of stage because it's very central. So this area, which we long overlooked, became more important, but also tells you something about the history of London and its population. So I go back to 1800, London had over a million people, being the largest city in the world. And it maintained that status up until about 1900, later eclipsed by New York, partly because of the First World War, when London was the undisputed financial nerve center of the world. Um, you know, a clearing house for the London Stock Exchange for insurance and so forth. But then, um, as I say, it was uh, overtaken by New York, which became the world's physical nexus is to this day. Although London did regain some ground in recent uh, decades, but the Brexit vote has not London back a bit, at least temporarily. Um, anyhow, so then London's population peaked just before the Second World War, about six million. 
and then came the Second World War, there's evacuation. So um, the elderly, children, um, disabled people, we would have called them invalids back then, they were evacuated, pregnant women and so on, um, and sent to the countryside, sent to areas which are less likely to be bombed, because of course the Luftwaffe was going to be paying visits to very industrialised areas. If not just London, it'd be like Belfast, Glasgow, Manchester, Birmingham. So go deep into the countryside, there's a minimal chance of being bombed. And navigation was very crude back then, look out the window. Um, using a map, a compass um, uh, and a watch to try and figure out where you were. I mean, they could, they could miss by a hundred miles, even bomb the wrong country one time, bombed era, as in Republic of Ireland, despite it being, being neutral back then, that's why the blackout was in force. So anyway, London's population went down significantly in the Second World War, quite a few buildings were bombed out. Obviously London didn't suffer anything like as badly as many major cities, particularly German cities, so people can't feel too sorry for themselves like that. About 60,000. British civilians killed in the war, and it was very big. But in most countries it was much higher proportionally as well as in absolute terms. Um, anyway, so that area is called Little Venice further up there. It's nothing to do with, do with Italians living in the area, it's just because there's a very wide bit of the canal we can easily turn around. Um, so what else about the canal and this and that? But uh, anyway, so the population of London went down, people moved out, never moved back in because it took a long time to rebuild the housing. Um, and we're coming on to a little bit of cobblestone. I'm very glad it's, 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 it's been preserved. How about that? Because um, quite often we don't tear it up, which is such a waste. The French do, just in case they, they soissons huit heures, um, rip it up and then fling it at les flics. Uh, where was I? So um, the population of London went down and down and down and was falling. And by the 1970s, there were so many uh, derelict buildings here, it's actually quite easy to be a squatter. So lots of communes, a lot of sort of um, ultra left uh, cults here and there. But uh, then in the 80s, Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher announced the right to buy. And so uh, these council tenants began to purchase their houses. Remember, local councils, your city council, your county council, used to build housing, low cost housing, the social housing that uh, accommodated about 50% of the population. It's a completely normal thing to do. Now, some of these council flats look ugly. But then again, you should have seen the hovels people lived in in the 30s. It was a marked improvement. Um, so uh, then, obviously, there was a property shortage and your property prices went through the roof. Hard to believe that uh, a middle class family could live in a decent part of London at a decent flat or even house as recently as the mid 80s. And that's just unimaginable now. You'd have to be a multimillionaire. I mean, I lived in Kensington in 1982. <laughs> There's no way I could dream of doing that now. Um, so that was that, but also because the, the population was so low, laws of supply and demand. But then the population then went up and up through immigration mainly, and uh, that was that. Um, and so now it's peaked at about 9 million. And so obviously property prices are very high. So that's a, you know, a bit of the, the, the Paddington area, the canal area, some of the um, old uh, warehouses being converted to other purposes. Um, I, I'd fair to say it's not the most handsome part of London even now. Um, Pitt is to Addington as London is to Paddington. I can't remember who gave us that bit of doggerel. Um, so that's about Pitt the Younger and the other Prime Minister, Joseph Addington. The doctor, they called him scurrilously, scornfully, since his father was a physician. Not, not Joseph Ad 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 Addington himself, but it was thought to be a very lowly profession, under, hands-on and grimy, sullied his um, paws with people as well. Mm. Excrescences. Clister pipes is a symbol, as in something for giving enemas. The St. Mary's Hospital behind, where a few uh, athelings have hatched, Prince William and so on, other sprogs, Prince William's three children, um, Her Royal Highness Meghan Markle, the Duchess of, uh, where is it, Sussex, she didn't give birth there, I can't remember where it was actually. So that's that. And obviously it's where, where um, Sir Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin by accident when he was on holiday. Not exactly there, I, I filmed it in another video, the exact building. Well, actually, I think it's that, that red building on the corner on the, on the second floor, but you can't see it from this angle, the exact room. So there we are. Oh my God, the rosas are on to me. Watch out, the coppers. Okay, I'm on my way to Botany Bay, looks like. Yeah, there they are. The fuzz, the filth, the pigs. Okay, so we're coming up to London Street. Odd that it's called London Street because you think, we're in London. How can you call it London Street? But of course, going back to the days prior to 1889, there was a village in the county of Middlesex. And then, Greater London was created, Middlesex was abolished, simply amalgamated into Greater London. All the 32 boroughs of London, that's including the City of London and the City of Westminster. Okay, here we are on Parade Street, named after the, the all but forgotten 
early 19th century poet Winthrop Mackworth Parade, a man who deserves greater recognition, though uh, he felt the icy hand of death upon him at the age of only eight and 30 years. I'll switch it off now as we've got to Paddington Station. Enough canals at London history.